Every now and again, I like to grab random bits of uh, toy music making equipment and oddities from car boot sales and junk shops. And I've had this for quite a while. It's the uh, Waddington's Computer Tune. It's a little sort of keyboard sequencer that I think's probably from the late 70s or early 80s. Uh, so, yeah, let's have a look at it. So this is what we've got. This is how it would have arrived to us um, back in the 70s or 80s or whenever it was first released, which I'm not quite sure about because I can't seem to find much information online. I got this for the princely sum of £5, which I thought was quite a good deal. Uh, it's a nice little box with a cellophane window and some fake hands and shows you all the different functions uh, on this little graphic. Some clue as to its age, though, can be seen on the side of the box as it lists one of the world's smallest computers as having 9,000 transistors. Now, I'm not sure whether this is the CPU or the CPU and the memory it's uh, talking about, but that would put things at around about 1978, I think, judging from a Wikipedia entry I found. It also brags about the fact that the technology is reliable enough to put man on the moon. And then it slides out in... in a lump of polystyrene. It's actually quite small. Um, here's the manual. Here's an appropriate Wurzel gummage ruler. Um, so yeah, it's just over a foot long, or just over 30 centimeters. So that's quite, quite small, really. It's uh, got a cell membrane keyboard, power. These uh, memories are actually just demos, mode, four tempo positions, volume, and an effects knob, which isn't really effects actually, but we'll get to that. So that's the front, and then you've got this on the back. There's supposed to be a little tuning wheel in here that I've removed because it's plastic and it's supposed to slot into this little preset potentiometer, but it seems to have got chewed up, so it's not working anymore. It's easy to remove though. And then battery compartment, so it runs off two nine volt batteries. So let's whack a couple of those in. So, as soon as we turn it on, uh, depending on the volume, which is probably all the way up. So that's it in echo mode, actually. I should have probably just put it into normal, but that's the sound we're going to get. You've got a two octave keyboard. And what I was saying about the effects knob is it's actually not effects at all. It... Cross fades into another octave, so effectively you've got three octaves of keyboard to play with. Um... Which is really useful. So it's always recording, whenever you play, up to 32 notes. You can clear a memory from here, uh, clear a note during a sequence, uh, put in a, a rest with space, and play. And that is effectively it. So if we um, clear this memory and play a sequence that's put in... Something like that. You're going to get that. Uh, let's try it on lower tempo. There you go. So I should probably mention it's also a line out on the side, so let's get that hooked up and we can hear the rest of it through a uh, proper recording setup. So it's a line out and it also mutes the speaker, which is really helpful. Uh, so we've got your standard mode uh, in normal. Echo just adds in little, it's almost like a gated note, apart from it's, re it's repeating them. You'll actually hear there's a slight envelope to this. There's a little bit of release, which is really nice. I was expecting this to be very much like a stylophone with just a hard gated uh, note, but it's actually a bit of release to it. It makes it quite musical and useful. So then in echo mode, the repeats change depending on the speed. And then you've got chord mode, which plays everything as a triad. It's always going to be a major triad, which is 
kind of difficult to use, to be honest, because um, obviously you don't necessarily want that. But then, so, like, if we go into echo mode and then press play. What? Where's that extra bit come from? Oh, of course, it's all the extra notes I've played in <laughs> as I've been going along. It's also recorded those. So, yeah, if we want to uh, ha have the same sequence we have before, we have to clear the memory. Yeah, I forgot about that. So, yeah, we can put in... So let's try something different. Let's... Uh... Oh, no! Why are you doing this? Stop! I don't know why it does that occasionally. I think there's something slightly wrong with mine. But let's clear this. C, G, C, space, C, G, C, space, C, F, C, space, C, F, C. So, you're going to get that. And then normal. Chord mode. Not particularly useful chord mode, but you know it's interesting to have an extra thing to play with. And then obviously you've got the tempos. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can after you've recorded, you can alter the down to the lower octave, or you can just play it by hand. So yeah, up to 32 notes can be sequenced, and then if you use echo and chord mode, it extends them out. So for echo mode, it's going to add in three copies of the same note in a row and then in chord mode it's going to turn those all into triads so yeah here in our example we clear just on the you're going to get that and then makes it longer and then longer again so what i really like about the fact is just the tone of this thing sounds so incredibly retro it suits the colour scheme really, really well. It's sort of got a bit of a sound of Cold War number stations to it. There's a particular Cold War number station that transmitted something called the Lincolnshire Poacher, which is a folk song. But it was done on, on equipment like this. It was very much like a square wave sound, and it's very raw. But there's something quite nice about the tone of this thing. So it's very, very limited. Obviously, you've got no control over the tone other than what it can produce and the octave. But... I just quite like it, yeah. It's got a, um, a fully chromatic keyboard as well, which is worth mentioning, because a lot of toy instruments are restricted to diatonic uh, mode, which will just mean that you've got um, only the white notes and no black notes. So this has got a full keyboard, so you can compose some nice weird little arpeggios on it, or play live, or sample this and create some interesting sounds. So it's a, it's a quite a limited machine to use, but it's you know it's musically useful if you can find one kicking around. Uh, if you want to see what it's capable of with a few effects and uh, a bit of multi-tracking, I'll put a link in my description below to a tune I made a few days ago for January that um, sort of did about as much as I think you can do with the with the keyboard. So hopefully that shows a little bit more of what it's capable of. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please leave a comment below and subscribe. Uh, please check out my other reviews and uh, let me know of anything you want to see on the channel. Uh, see you in the next one.